afternoon. Welcome to Jeff's Fun Sunday. It wasn't meant to be Jeff's Fun Sunday, but I've decided that I'm going to film all four of these videos at the same time. And I, I, I really enjoyed the last two. I've just had a really good rant about the Consumer Price Index and EE. And then we've done a funny story about a man from Birmingham who saved two people from a Tesla in a floating sauna on a on a fjord in Norway. So if you haven't watched that one yet, go check that one out because it's a serious story uh, with a chewy centre. Right, talking of serious stories, this Range Rover thing, uh, I still find the whole thing hilarious. The Range Rover insurance, cars getting stolen, Range Rover paying off the media. I'm sorry, I cannot take it seriously. I just think it's funny. This is the Daily Mail headline. No wonder they're uninsurable. Range Rover owner hands back his four-year-old model when he's quoted £14,000 for insurance and it's stolen one day later. A Range Rover was stolen one day after its frustrated owner handed the four-year-old model back to the finance company, which quoted fourteen grand for the insurance. Business owner Mark Pering, 52, re why does it always tell us how old these people are? Does it matter? Uh, revealed last month that he was being quoted huge amounts for an insurance policy on his 4x4 after he was told Jaguar Land Rover's own insurance would not cover him. That's odd, isn't it? Jaguar Land Rover's new insurance policy that has been designed to save the day, yet again doesn't save the day. The frustrated motorist decided to ditch the car brand for good. Another person leaving Jaguar Land Rover, I don't know why more people aren't, and bought himself a new Mercedes GLE, which he could insure for about the tenth of a price. It's 10 times cheaper to insure an alternative car. I, I don't know why everyone is... We should be seeing Range Rovers just like abandoned by the side of the road. That's what I'd do. Oh, yeah, I need to renew the insurance on my Range Rover. Yeah, it's going to be uh, £25,000. Darling, just check on the paperwork. When does the uh, when does the insurance expire? Uh, you got seven days. Okay, fine. <laughs> just leave it. Just leave it somewhere. And then phone the insurance company and be like, yeah, my Range Rover's been stolen. <laughs> Jeff, we found that Range Rover. Uh, there's also CCTV of you pushing it into the canal. Pfft, not me. I, I don't remember doing that. Like, wh why aren't we seeing abandoned Range Rovers everywhere? It's just ridiculous. Uh, instead of renewing the lease, Mr. Pering returned the car to the financier's black horse, who sent it to British, who sent British car auctions BCA to pick it up from his home in Loughton, Essex. A uh, well-known area for needing four-wheel drives at around 4 p.m. on the Wednesday. He was glad to be rid of the uninsurable Range Rover Sport, but then was woken up at 2 a.m. on Friday with a call from the police who said to him, Mr. Perring, do you know that your car has been stolen? To which he said, it doesn't belong to me anymore. It's been taken to British car auctions by Black Horse. The police called me and said they'd managed to catch one of the two people who stole the car. And he said, you could not make this up. You couldn't. I, I couldn't have come up with this one. Mr. Perring said police told him the car had been stolen from somewhere near Ilford and recovered somewhere in the E11 postcode of London. That's odd. This is a car that was stolen outside of London and then taken to London. Normally they get stolen in London and taken out of London. He was told officers arrested the driver, but the passenger got away. Why do I want to know more about what happened there? Uh, hopefully we'll watch it on police camera action and it'll be some like hapless car chase where a slightly overweight police officer can't keep up with the young, fit Albanian. Not stereotyping. Um, not all police officers are slightly overweight. He said, <laughs> see what I did there? He said he believed the car security systems had alerted Jaguar Land Rover and the police that it had been stolen. Obviously, with these modern Range Rovers, as soon as the car is, as soon as the car realises it's stolen, it lets the police know and it lets Jaguar Land Rover know so that Jaguar Land Rover can then issue an immediate press release to say that their cars are not the most stolen cars in the country. That's pretty much exactly what, how it happens. The car lets Jaguar Land Rover know. The car lets the police know. The police contact you to say that it's been stolen so that you can phone your insurers because they don't intend on doing anything and getting the car back. And Jaguar Land Rover only intend on managing the PR. Before handing the car back, Mr. Pering had removed the aftermarket Tektronix immobiliser he had bought and installed to improve the car's security, which he describes as hopeless. These cars are a hundred grand. It's effing ridiculous, he said. It's shambolic. They're so easy to steal, it's ridiculous. It's not worth buying them. Almost as much Fs in that one as my man Alan from just the other day. 
I had it for four years on a finance deal and I handed it back because of the insurance. Literally within a day, it's stolen after taking the immobiliser off. It's farcical. Range Rover has said it invested £10 million to upgrade the security of more than 75,000 older cars. I think there's a million of these Range Rovers that are affected. I might be wrong in the numbers, but I'm sure when I was speaking to Rich from Challenger Road, the numbers are huge. There's no way they're going to even make a dent. Mr. Perring's car had not been upgraded as he's only received the letter offering it a week or two ago and he'd already decided to get rid of it by that point. It comes after it's reported last year that Range Rovers are suffering huge price drops and their owners struggle to get them insured. Data from the DVLA in May revealed the Range Rover Velar was the most sought out car by criminals with two in every 100 of the models stolen. I thought the numbers were lower than that. Land Rover was dubbed the most stolen brand. 920, I did a video on that. However, the number of Range Rover variants declined by almost 20%. More recent DVLA data on thefts show. It suggests efforts and investments by Jaguar Land Rover to bolster the anti-theft systems in its cars is having an impact. And as I said in my video just the other day, I think it's because the owners are more aware and they're parking them in the garage and they're fitting a stop lock. I honestly don't think... Jaguar Land Rover have done enough um, and I don't think they intend to as well I think all they want to do is play the PR game and keep sending out press releases to the media that say oh well we're not quite the most stolen brand in the country oh new line going up over there um, anyway for all new and previous generation Range Rover and Range Rover Sport from 2018 model years if vehicles are properly locked <laughs> I mean, talk about stating the obvious. My car's been stolen. Did you lock it? No. Where were the keys? In the ignition. That's why it was stolen then. Uh, are up to date with the latest security updates and they will be immune to the relay attack and the BCM theft method. Uh, we urge all clients who have been contacted by JLR to receive complimentary security upgrades and to take us up on these. They can be arranged via authorised retailers and take 20 minutes for our specialist roadside. Yada, yada. Basically, Jaguar Land Rover say... Come to us and we'll make your cars less stealable, notwithstanding the fact that they should have made them less stealable in the first place and their new one-size-fits-all insurance policy doesn't actually fit all or many at all. Uh, Mr. Perring is just one in a string of fuming Range Rover and Land Rover customers who have found insuring their cars at a reasonable price impossible. Mail Online reported this week of a Range Rover Velar owner, Kirsten Lisiek, she was 38, and said that she had to declare her car off the road and will be forced to sell it at a loss of 15 grand after insurance quoted her 890 pounds a month. Something hugely ironic, isn't there, about a Velar built by Range Rover, which is a brand that is built on the off-road heritage of Land Rover, now having to be declared off the road because no one can insure it. And we don't even need to go into the fact that nobody needs one of these cars. He says sitting in a BMW X5. But remember, my BMW X5 has done 220,000 miles and was £1,000. All of the depreciation has been done by somebody else. I just like the big roof on it. Kirsty, who lives in Winchmore Hill, North London, again, well known for being a tough spot for off-road, sturdy, you know, uh, what was the word I'm looking for? Durable vehicles, said that Acorn will not renew their insurance with them and the car's own manufacturer also allegedly told her it cannot provide a quote. This is on the back of stay-at-home mother Hannah Platts, who revealed in late January her and her husband were forced to sell their nearly brand-new top-of-the-range Land Rover Defender. That was the one I covered last week, where this was the top-of-the-range £100,000 Land Rover Defender that they had because where they live is so full of potholes and the roads are really bad, but it had 29-inch wheels on it. Average quote last year for a man aged 36 to 50 driving a newer Range Rover model was £5,000. £5,000 for car insurance. I can't even imagine spending £5,000 on a car. Uh, the whole car! Uh, the scale of Range Rover theft has become such an issue in recent years that some owners in London have faced excessive. We know all this. Jaguar Land Rover did some stuff. 8,000 Range Rover owners have been using the solution, but it's not enough, as we know. Uh, stolen cars can be dismantled in chop shops for their parts to be resold. We know this. Jaguar Land Rover boss Adrian Mardell angrily asserted yesterday that Range Rovers are not Britain most st Britain's most stolen vehicle. After announcing the firm's financial results, he said thefts had fallen 27%. You've still got most of your models in the top 10. Just because more Ford Fiestas are stolen 
So he's basically saying everybody needs to lay off Range Rover because we're no longer the most stolen vehicle. No, the Ford Fiesta is the most stolen vehicle, which is also Britain's most sold vehicle. So it's basically the most popular vehicle in the country. So you would expect it to be at number one. So bragging that your Range Rover Sport is no not, no longer at number one is it's the same as EE saying we're going to raise our prices in line with the consumer price index. It's just bollocks. It's bollocks use of statistics. Lies and statistics. He said that only 11 out of the 12,800, the most recent model, had been stolen, according to police data. So only 11 out of 12,800 of the most re recent models have been stolen. That's because 12,889 of them are in the factory waiting for parts or at the dealership waiting for warranty claims to be sorted out. He says there's no reason whatsoever why any insurance company should not gladly and readily insure these new vehicles. Zero reason in any part of the country. So he's saying there's no reason why insurance companies should say no to Range Rovers, despite the fact that everybody knows that Range Rovers, A, break and B, get stolen and C, when they do break or get stolen or get crashed, they then go back to the dealer for months on end because the dealers haven't got any parts. So he's saying there's no reason why the insurers should say, no, you can't insure a Range Rover. I've just given you three without even trying. These significant reductions are a result of engineering our new vehicles to be robust against all well-known theft methods. Why haven't they been engineering all of their vehicles to be robust against theft methods? It's just pathetic, isn't it? In fact, our latest data shows that only 10 out of the 12,200 of the latest model of Range Rover has been stolen since January 2022. Isn't that like it was 11 earlier on? So is it 11 out of 12,800 or is it 10 out of 12,200? Because if it's 10 out of 12,200 and then 11 out of 12,800, basically, I, I think they're making this up as they go along. We've invested £10 million to update more than 75,000 older client vehicles. As I said, not enough. JLR is also funding hundreds of thousands of pounds on additional policing to tackle the root causes by stopping the flow of stolen cars in and out of the country to the benefit of all UK drivers. Well, there's a lot to be said about that, that private industry now needs to step in to fund the police because the police haven't got the funds to be doing it because we've had too many years of a Tory government. This video is 12 minutes long. Um, comments. Let's do some comments, shall we? Luckily, the last one's a blank page. I'll burn that later just to save the planet. Comments. Many have gone into Europe on false plates and are used by holiday home owners. European police don't check them. I hadn't thought of that. You could buy a stolen Range Rover for cheap Get it across the channel, change the number plates and just rock around in it at your holiday home and nobody's going to know. That's a great idea. There's a car buying tip from Jeff Buys Cars. If you have a holiday home, don't keep your real car there in case it gets stolen. Get a stolen car. Another comment. Nobody here seems to have asked JLR boss Adrian Mardell why his company are not willing to insure the aforementioned owners if the risk of loss is as exaggerated as he says. Put your money where your mouth is. Another great British management disaster. That is exactly how I feel. All Jaguar Land Rover are interested in doing is managing the PR because the only people left buying their cars are idiots who were born yesterday. Why on earth would you buy one? I know I'm going to get a load of comments being like, oh, Jeff, you should support everyone in all cars. You know, all cars matter. Range Rovers all matter. And I'm, I'm sorry, they just don't. There's some cars that are just completely unnecessary. And when the start price is six figures, I'm out. It's not what this channel is about. This channel is about affordable motoring for the masses. And uh, buying a 160 grand Range Rover every three years is just the total opposite of what this channel is about. Uh, but at least it's not electric, because if it was electric, it wouldn't work like the iPace, which never seems to work. Thanks for watching this video that was far too long. Right, I've got another one now about Polestar. We've got some funny comments on that one as well. So that'll be video number four of Jeff's Sunday Night Jamboree. Right, let's do this one. Cheers for watching.